occasion on this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to y'all, ladies. Thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Amen. So I consider all the mothers in here a blessing. Praise God. Praise you know, some of our greatest challenges is understanding not only who we are, but whose we are. And I think sometimes when we can locate ourselves based on how God has located us, you'll find yourself more defined in what you do and how you do it. And I use that term because see, sometimes we're starting to search for things to really define ourselves. But who you really are is based on who Christ, who God has made you not only to be, but to become. And sometimes in our stages of life, we have to transition based on where God wants us to be, based on where we had to come from to get there. Amen. Sometimes it's confusing. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor, I want to be a businessman. I wouldn't think about ministry. God let me run my course for so long, then he said, oh, time's out. Now you're going to begin to do what I want you to do. Amen. Now the challenge of that, a lot of us, we're all in the same boat. Hallelujah. In our mind, we perceive based on what we want to do and what we want to become, but that's based on how the world has programmed us. Amen. And see, under the born-again experience, you have to be deprogrammed to be programmed for what you were really born to do. Amen. 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 And, I, and, I, and I tell you, you're not going to be at peace until you're walking in the arena which God has perfected yeah. you in. Hallelujah. You ever been on a job that seemed like work and been on a, 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 a place of employment don't seem like nothing going on but you're just so fun to be there? Mm -hmm. That's the difference. That's heavy, Pastor. That's heavy. See, well, whatever you're called to be and when you walk in that, it doesn't seem like work at all. But when you're trying to struggle to be what you're not called to be, it's an everyday challenge. Sometimes you need to just tune in and say, you know, God, time out for me. Let me begin to tune into you. That's part of our walk. That's part of who we are. Amen. Amen. We've been doing this, started this series of teaching on healing. And, and, and just to, it seemed like the church was in attack with a lot of people. Um, a, a report on, on our brother Richard Best. Uh, this week we've had some challenges there. Uh, we really found out at the end he had a really a massive stroke. And it's been a challenge on um, the recovery process. Um, and, and even from the standpoint that hospice has been called in and they want to just go ahead and pull them off uh, pull the plug on it, just to be honest with you. And so, and it's one of the challenges that all this week that his brother, because uh, it's only uh, the two of them uh, that we've been, really been praying. There have been moments where, in, um, uh, in speaking with Richard, I, you know, let him know I'm there, and he tries to open his eyes, uh, even from the standpoint of even squeezing my hand. And, and so there are still things that are there about him. But then again, uh, talking with Chaplain Glover and so forth because I know it's one thing he's confronted every day in the hospital that sometimes the machines, we react to those machines based on that. But, uh, but the last few days, you know, we've, we've been able to really try to communicate and there's still of a consciousness that are there. We say, open your eyes, really try to open your eyes. And he tries to really open it and I say, well, squeeze, man. And he tries to squeeze him. But the real deal would be on, on tomorrow and just keep him up in prayer when they just remove everything and see just really what's there. Now, now, and I'm sharing this with you because, see, number one, the, the, uh, and, and I say this because uh, on, on your family members and so forth, it's a win-win. It's a win if they pull through, and it's a win-win if they're going home. Amen. Now, now, we may not see it as a win-win, but sometimes we forget we're just passing through. Amen. 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 Glory. It's hard to, to accept the unknown. But for believers, it's supposed to be the known. You know earth is not your what? Home. I mean, do you really know it? Yes. 
despising truth. Yes. But the challenge is when you're confronted with that day of crossover, are you really ready to go? Yes. Amen. Amen. So it's one of the challenges that, that uh, I, and I shared with his brother, and, uh, and I said, you know, I said, now, let me tell you this. The worst thing could happen that if he get a glimpse of heaven. Now, hear me well on it. That's the worst thing that can happen. Because if he sees it, why would he want to come back? Amen. Hear me well on that now. Amen. If you see victory, why would you want to come back to the misery? Yes. Yes. Amen. So it's one of the challenges that, that he's being confronted with. And, and we want to keep him. His name is Wayne Best. And we want to keep Richard uh, in prayer. They haven't allowed uh, too many visitors because of the condition. And it's a constant thing where they're doing things there with them and the drainage of the blood from the brain and so forth and so on and the oxygen. So it's, it's a lot. It's a challenge there. And, and, and if you're not used to seeing that, it can be overwhelming to your eyes. Amen. And so, so it's it. But, but I ask you all just to keep them in prayer. Praise Lord. Uh, Sister Dorothy wasn't feeling too good today, so she's a little pressure up, so that's why they're not here today also. But, but we're going to keep her in prayer. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and believers, hear me well when I say a lot of things occur spiritually first, then physically based on the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if the, de the devil's going to attack you spiritually so that you can he can tear down that that, that challenge in you physically. Now, as we looked at this and we talked about this, and I'm just going to recap from last week, Psalms 107. T turn over there. Oh, I tell y'all what. It, it, it's a good day in the Lord. Pastor been busy all this week. Brandon, I want you to know how much overtime I've been putting in. Triple time. Amen. But it's all good. It's all good. But, but the challenge is that there are, there's a lot going on in the body of Christ. Hear, hear me well when I say that. I, I, I have uh, shared with uh, Reverend Glover, the changes in, in a lot of ministries, a lot of the Baptist churches, you know, kicking out pastors, bringing in pastors, changing pastors. You know, there's challenges going all over. But it's on the, with the body of Christ. And, and you have to pray because it means that now the church has really started doing what it's supposed to do because of the attack the enemy is bringing upon us. You, you cannot put your head in the ground like an ostrich and don't think these things going on. Because they're really going to affect you. There is spiritual warfare going all over. Amen. And the word of God tells us that. So don't think it's strange when the Bible says, when this stuff starts happening to you. Amen. It's for the word's sake. One of the greatest uh, 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 signs, I believe, uh, based on my faith and trust in God, is that as soon as you begin to pray for something, and right before it's going to be delivered, look for the devil to show up. Soon as you pray for something and God has delivered it based on your faith to receive it, look for the devil to show up. Why that, Pastor? Because he wants to distract you yeah. or delay you from receiving the thing that you're seeking from God. Yeah. I, I say that because that's your sign that your blessing is already on the way. Amen. 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 It, 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 it's not the time to draw back. It's your time to press through. Oh, see, see, that's, that's your sign. That, okay, okay, all right. He just showed up. Mm -hmm. It's about to be delivered. Amen. The Bible says when you've done all you can do, the next thing you can do is what? Stand. Some of us, we want to buckle. We don't want to stand. But this is your defining moment. Amen. Your, your, your gallant hour. Amen. That's your time right there. What you really say about it? Because, see, you at that moment now where well, you got to choose this day. Who you going to serve? Because in turn, who you serving going to be the one that served you. We, we spoke about, and, and we spoke about this on last week, there's a difference between healing and being cured. We spoke about that. And we also added into the play of divine health. We spoke about over in Psalm 107 and, 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 and verse 20, he said, he said his word and did what? 
and rescued, rescued them, okay? And that word rescue is translated over in your King James to say deliver them from their what? But, but if you look at that word from their destruction. The only person that can destroy God's healing power in you is you. Amen. We can be very destructive on how we think about the situation we're in. The Bible says a man think of, in his heart. so is he. So is he. See, so you will define if, if, you're, if, the, if the word that's been said to you, is it going to be positive or it's going to be negative? Amen. That's your challenge. Every time Jesus healed somebody, he said, be it unto you. They said, oh, thank you. He said, no, be it unto you. According to your faith. See, your faith determines how you receive or not receive what God has sent. You say, well, how is that so? Because, see, if you read the scripture, you're going to find there were some people Jesus couldn't heal. Why? Because of unbelief. That's the word. Now, if Jesus couldn't heal them because of their unbelief, what does that say to you? It says that your faith has to be the one that makes you whole. Jesus was the word made flesh. God sent the word not only in what I call a physical sin, but also in a spiritual sin. It came first spiritually, then it manifests itself physically in the form of Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. Amen. Now, that word itself, and, and, and we're just not talking about physical healing. It has to first begin with spiritual healing. Amen. Sometimes we don't understand that a lot of your problems is you. Amen. Amen. This is why you the word from your own destruction. We can be very destructive about what we say, what we do, and how we live. Amen. 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 We, we, we went on and we talked about Cain Hezekiah over in, over in the second chapter of Cain. Turn, turn there right quick here because I got, I got to get you to a point here, but I want to just recap so you can get this stuff back down in your spirit. I want you to know that you know that you know. See, there's a difference. I don't want you to be thinking about it. I don't want you to be wondering about it. I want you to know that you know that you know that you put to receive these blessings in your life. Amen. There's a difference now when you know that you know that you know. See, when you know that you know, nobody can dispute it to you. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What I said, second king, I'm over in first king. I, I look at first king and I'll I, I start another teaching from that. Amen. Second king, what I said, 20th chapter, correct? It says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick unto what? Yeah. Now, I use that term because, see, number one, I wanted to make sure you got that line in. Unto death. In other words, what everybody say, you die. Now, that's what they're telling you. You die. Now, but see, he had to make a decision right then of, of what, what they said was going to be powerful or what God word was going to be said was going to be powerful. That's what he was saying. He, he was confronted, and, and I'm going to tell you, when you have a prophet of God, and this is what Hezekiah said, in those days when Hezekiah was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, set that house what? See, that, that what they tell you at hospice. Set your house in order. Now, now let, let, let me give you two houses you got, you got to deal with right then. You got to deal first with your spiritual house and your physical house. Now, if you're just going to deal with your physical house, you're going to set your house in order. These the bills got to be paid. This is what my insurance plan looks like. This is what, you know, this is why I want to be buried. See, you can do that. But now, if it's, if it's a wake-up call for you spiritually, you can say, wait a minute, hold up. I know it ain't my time. Amen. Amen. Let, let me get my heart right. Let me get that word that's supposed to be in me right so I can make sure that I'm not just going because somebody else said I'm supposed to leave. Amen. Amen. See, sometimes we can kick ourselves off out of the earth ourselves. Amen. Amen. Now, now, let me ask you this now. And, uh, and, and I don't want you to get spiritual. How many of y'all want to leave the earth before time? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. 
because I mean, I want to know now because you know, I, I was going to excuse you and me preaching this to you. <laughs> See, you want to make sure that you fulfill the anointing of the goal God has set you on the earth to fulfill. Because that's part of your reward in the going to heaven. That you accomplish what he called you to do as you walk this earth and your reward for doing what he called you to do while you walk this earth, you're going to receive up in heaven. Amen. 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 See, so sometimes when you want to leave early, wait a minute, it's like, wait a minute, you haven't. So you, you about to cut some of your blessings up there short because you're trying to get up there too fast. Amen. 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 To whom much is given. Amen. Now, when they said in my father had a mini mansion, brother, I don't want to be the one opening the ghetto neighborhood up in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to be in that, and they call it a gated community. <laughs> Amen. 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 But that will be achieved based on me doing everything I'm supposed to do here on the earth. Sometimes we don't see it that way, do we? We, we? we don't understand that our blessing. Let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me tell you all the worst thing y'all can be doing. I want to get that out to it. You can't pray for the dead. They gone. Amen. See? They either there or there. Amen. Amen. Cut it dry. Now you can pray for their family who's still... But people, oh, Father, they going to bless them, Father. No, uh -uh, no, no. It won't happen. Amen. Now, here, Hezekiah said, wait a minute, hold up. Back, back this train up. <laughs> he said, then he turned his face to the wall. He heard what the prophet said. I know you're a man of God. See, Amen. now, y'all can hear what the doctor say. You can hear what the nurse say. You can hear what all the specialists say. Amen. But in the end, that license they got on the wall said they give them a license to practice medicine. It isn't nothing about them being the heels. Amen. 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 See, Jesus is the heel. Yes. They, they just practicing medicine. Yes. That's like me being a, 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 a wannabe cook, a chef, and I'm putting together an agreement. Yeah, hey, brother, tell me how that tastes. Oh, you don't let oh, too much pepper here. Try this right here. Oh, too much salt here. Try this right here. Oh, you threw up? Okay, let me give you some milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing various recipes on you. Amen. But see, one of the things, we talked about this, about your body being, having those free radicals which is part of your DNA and, and why certain medication work better for others than some others because of their makeup. Well, see, the only one who really know your makeup is the one who created you. So why should I go to those who, who are trying to figure me out versus the one who already know what I'm made of? I mean, I want y'all to understand this now. Because, see, in the sense, we're dealing with a physical healing versus a spiritual cure. Amen. And that can only come from above. But. It's certain requirements that attach. As a cow, and we, we read this, he said he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked, what? Before thee, and what? In truth. Believers, a lot of us don't want to walk in truth. Amen, sir. See, the Bible wants you to know the what? Truth. The truth should what? Knowing is one thing, implementing in your life is a whole different deal. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, we were just, uh, uh, chapter 11 was just talking about it. It said, for me to know right and do wrong. You, 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 you are more guilty than that little child. Amen. Children, they, they grow in life learning what's right and what's wrong. But as a adult, you want to know what's right and what's wrong. Amen. See, I'm going to forgive that child because they did in the learning process. But when you know that you know and you're still doing it. Amen. Yes, sir. That's the word. Consequences. We're, we're watching 
celebrities and, and people who have high esteem, they've gone, they, they, they're at the twilight of their life and all the stuff, the stuff they've done back there is catching up with them. Rather, rather, rather than going out in glory, they're going out in shame. Why? Because somewhere along the path, they didn't repent. And you say, well, what, 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 would that, that have made a difference? Yes. God said, if, you, if, if, if that, when you come to him, 1 John 1 now, what does it say? 1 John 1 now, what it says? If you what? He's what? And do what? Cleanse you. That means that those folks have not been cleansed. Because if you're really clean and God forgiven, and if God is for you, it's telling me that just because they got away from, from the world seeing it initially, they didn't get away from God. Y'all hold on to that, okay? Hold on to that. Because see what you're doing in the, in the, doing in the dark, it's going to be brought to the light. God was the original person who made night vision. He knew men love what? So he had, he had already his night vision on, but he knew you, you were operating mainly in the dark. Amen. Amen. Now you make it hide stuff from the world, but you can't hide it from God. Amen. Came to the and said, look here. And, and, and when he was saying this, he knew that he'd been falling to path. God has chosen for his life here. He, he said, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect what? Perfect this is why you got to guard your heart. I know people make you mad. I know stuff get up under your skin. I know you want to use that, want to cuss folks out. But somehow you got to guard. Amen. I'm going to either walk in right, which is the flesh, or I'm going to walk in righteousness, which is the spirit. Amen. See, sometimes we too many, we're in a society now where everybody trying to defend rights. Male rights, female rights, gay rights, dog rights. You got more animals got rights than the human beings. I am so glad that some of them rights didn't get didn't enacted, uh, were, in, were not enacted when I was a little boy, because I know I'd have been in trouble. <laughs> we had to do things, throw firecrackers at dogs, and try to run down cats and all that kind of stuff. I know I had. I'd probably be in rape right now trying to preach the gospel. <laughs> but we had to be okay, y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> One animal, I know he's still trying to get his right, but nobody had passed on them snakes. Y'all know snakes ain't got no right. People, that's the only animal. People will ride down the road, see it, and back up just to run over it. <laughs> Amen. The challenge is that we got to learn how to walk in righteousness. We're so covered in our rights that we forget about righteousness. If they did you wrong, the Bible say, pray for them. For those who despitefully use you. Well, my right to that thing, not walk in righteousness. Why is that? Because God told you the battle is not yours. It's yours. Amen. Only thing you got to fight is the good fight of faith. Amen. Why? Because in order for me to guard my heart, I can't get caught up in what people have been doing to this flesh. Right. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. See, you got to free yourself because this is all a part of being cured and walking in health. Amen. Not just being healed. You got to walk in that. You got to be cured. He said here, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, see, God watches those words to perform it. And, and it came to pass, before Isaiah was going out into the middle of the court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, oh, back up, Isaiah, back up now, back up. What this man said is right, and he has been right. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into those houses of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days. What? 
All because of righteousness. All because of walking in truth. He was to death. But God said, because you've been walking in truth and you remind me because I want you to know. So you got to know that you know that you know that you've been doing what's righteous in the eyes of the Lord. If not, you need to repent right then. So, Lord, I've been missing it, Father. But, Lord, I'm asking you, Father God, if, if thou would just heal me today, I would turn my life around. And you're tell me, now, there's a scripture that says, it's better to not make a vow than make a vow and not keep it with the Lord. Right, right. Okay? Amen. So when you, when you repent, repent. Because sometimes you may even shorten your day by trying to lie to God. God knows your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Father, I'm, I'm going to do what's righteous. No, then you end up doing what's right. Right for what? Your flesh. A lot of us, we won't do what's righteous in the eyes of the Lord. We try to end up doing what's right for our flesh. Amen. That's it. That has to do with, nothing to do with divine health. Mm -hmm. This story, and I'm, I'm going to come back and do this later teaching on Hezekiah, how he still messed up in the end for his generation. So you can sometimes mess up your generation based on stuff you do too. Now, now as we moved on, we even went back over here to 3 John. Look over 3 John. This part I gotta get to today here. What's something I want to get to? Third John. I want to get. I, I, I have to get this down into your spirit. I keep bringing up the word truth, don't I? Once you know the what? The truth your what? What do you think freed him from death? He told God, he reminded God, he was walk, he has been walking what? It wasn't nothing about physical stuff he'd been doing. Oh, Father, I've been coming to church every Sunday. Oh, Father, I'm on the usher board. Oh, Father, I'm one of the ministers. Oh, Father, no, 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 no. Because you got usher board members, you got, you got people coming to church every Sunday, and you got ministers who are still not walking in the truth. Yes, sir. That, that title, that role, did not free him. Those titles and you come in contact won't free you. Why? Because once you know the truth, it's the truth. Now, when we had it, we talked about knowing it is one thing, doing it. So not only do you have to know it, you got to walk in it. You can't be trying to throw a dagger and hide your hand because it's going to come out. I always use this term, and we always talk about a Jezebel spirit. But a Jezebel spirit gets its power from Ahab. There could be no Jezebel without Ahab. So when everything is said and done, Ahab is just as guilty as Jezebel. So you can't get caught. You, you can't get caught up in that. Amen. What well, one thing I can say uh, uh, um, about that young lady I married over there is that she know when it gets down to spiritual stuff, crocodile tears ain't gonna move me from doing what God told me to do. She knows that. That's why every time you ever confront her, she say, well, you got to check with the pastor. Because she know, hey, I, he ain't going to listen to me. <laughs> now, if she say what's well, truth, we're on the same page. But don't bring foolishness to me. I love her. Mother of my children. God's first. Amen. That's my attitude. She, she, she can't work me. She can't con me. She can't promise me something that if I don't do it, she's going to deny me. Don't make no difference for me. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Y'all y'all listening to me? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. In street vernacular, do you feel me? Because when everything's said and done, God's going to hold me accountable. And, and she, she knows that about me. She knows that about me. I can laugh and I tell y'all some jokes up here, but when you get down to God, I'm serious business. 
Because I want to hear him first. Because in the end, the Bible says every knee and every tongue See? And see, and, 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 and that day he's going to ask me, well, who was lording over you? Me, my word, or your wife? Amen. Now I can sit there and play Adam if I want to. That woman you gave me. <laughs> but if it didn't work for Adam, I was supposed to work for Pastor Lockley. <laughs> Amen. He got kicked out still, didn't he? Right. Along with her. The, the point I'm saying, that don't matter what, what comes your way or how it sounds, you still got to walk in truth. There's no way to get around it. He, he, he says here, 3 John, 1 John, he said, The elders unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the what? In love in the truth. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in what? Yeah. Even if thy soul prosper, thy mind, thy will, thy will and your emotions. If that's not part, if you still got to cry about everything, and you still got to fuss about everything, and you still got to feel that your rights been violated by everything, you ain't, you ain't nothing, you ain't in no good health. Amen. Why? Because the devil knows that any time he can strike that button and get you back in the same bad, uh, uh, situation you was in prior to. If you can't overcome that little thing in your life, how can you receive the big thing that God has to offer? Hey, God don't cast his pearls to the swine. Amen. Amen. Well, see, God, and this is why you see me get all upset. Well, see, God knows my heart. That's why he's doing it to you. That's why you're getting beat up. Because your heart ain't right. You honor me with your lips, but Amen. You still doing what you want to do and trying to con people and all that other stuff. That ain't God's heart. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not walking in truth. Amen. Amen. It's got to be right. Hezekiah said, wait a minute, Lord, now you know I've been walking in truth. I've been trying to do what you told me to do. Amen. God said, you know something? He's right. And because of it, not only am I going to make sure you don't die, I'm going to add some more years in your life. God rewards those. He rewards them. If you need a reward from God, walk in truth and watch God watch over his word to perform it. Amen. 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 God will extend stuff to you when you decide to do what's righteous in his eyes. Amen. 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 And, and, and in so many instances, those are little things that you need. It's not all the big thing. It's the little thing. I'm going to tell them I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to go take them a little lunch money. I'm going to go and maybe cut their grass for them. I'm going to go over and just get them. I got this suit, and I really don't need it. It's too big for me or too small for me. Normally, it's just too small for you because you know how you do. But <laughs> get, get, give it to somebody else. God, God, God may have blown you up for that moment so you can give it away and let you come on back down. Your reward, okay, I'm going to let you lose weight again now. And then you start thinking about that suit you gave away. No, I got another one for you. <laughs> how to use you based on your mindset. Amen. Something God had to do because of your mindset. Amen. God knows how you think. Amen. Amen. He, he says for verse 3 for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the what? Oh. That is in thee. Even as thou not only is it in thee even as thou walkest you just can't be in, you gotta walk in it. Amen. Believers, not, enough, not enough, enough of us walk in the truth. Oh, we know it. But your flesh wanna have it its way, do it its way. You know, this ain't Burger King. You talk about your spiritual walk with God. That's why he said, once you know the truth, but you got to walk in it too. Amen. 
as it says, I have no longer joy. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I, I, I've, I've, I've watched this and, and I've looked at this and I, I just tried to make sure that, you know, as then the Lord just seemed like he just bring out more revelation pertaining to this. Every time I, I go and, and, and the Lord just minister things to me, he just, uh, it just, uh, I'm enlightened by what I see and, and how God is doing things here for us, you know. But as believers, we don't realize that our walk in God determines our health condition with God and in the world. It really does. It really does. As a man, think of Jesus said, Jesus said, there's something I can't heal. They, they, they refuse to not only accept me, but accept the word that's in me. Therefore, I can go through the motion, but it's not in their heart to accept the truth about who I am and whose I am. Amen. Even when Peter stepped out for the moment to walk on water, you know, he said, I see you. He said, just bid me. But he didn't again. He allowed his flesh to persuade him, you're not supposed to be doing this. Amen. And he began to sink again. I say because see, a lot of us, you know, we, we'll step out, but we allow the things we see, the things we hear to make us sink again. Amen. So you got to keep your eyes focused on this word. Amen. You got to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. There's some things that you'll start out in the truth and end up in the flesh. Amen. Why? You're taking your eyes off the word. Because see, it's power in the word. Amen. Well, well, one, one of the things I was looking at uh, pertaining to this, and it was uh, true discipleship. Turn over to uh, Matthew 8. I'm not going to finish this to what I need to do today, but it's okay. Because I'm not trying to rush this. Matthew chapter 8, the gospel of Matthew. There were a couple of examples of by which, and, uh, and I use this term, uh, where people who had real strong faith had enough faith not only for themselves, but for others. Uh, they, 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 they were just understood the power of the word. Everyone you pray for, they have to have some knowledge of, of uh, an understanding of not only who you are, and I, I started off saying, but whose you are. Amen? Now, now uh, 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 a lot of you, and, and I understand why, why the, the natural side, but I also want to make sure the spiritual side is in concert with what you're doing. And I, and I used to express it. Some people say, Pastor, uh, I've got a brother or sister, and we've done it numerous times. I need for you to pray for them. Well, you may approach me based on, you feel, well, I know you, you're in the Word, or I know you study the Word, and I know God hears your prayer. And I understand that. And, and, and I can appreciate you having that. But it does not negate the fact that you must also have that power in you. See, God is not a respected person. See, see, God, God's word is designed for all who receive it and accept it. 
and, and, and there, there are people that, that I can lay hands on and pray for. Now, just because you don't see me laying hands don't mean I can't do it. But, but I also, when I, before I lay hands, because the Bible says, touch no man suddenly. So, see, a lot of us, we want to go and jump through and lay hands on folks right here, okay? Now, I'm not, I, may, I may sound funny, but I'm telling you something. If you're not called to do it, don't do it. Okay? See, you, you, you come back and your tongue hanging out and your eyes going back in your head, you know. <laughs> don't try to walk in something you're not called to do. Amen. Don't try to go beyond where your faith will take you. Amen. 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 You know, Simon the sorcerer said, hey, look here, look here. What, I saw you just lay some, you know, did that. Hey, look here. Uh, let me, let me, I'll give you a couple of thousand dollars. Let me get a little of that from you. It doesn't work that way. Many are called. Not, not saying you can't get there, but don't try to walk outside your ram. Now, 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 the only way you don't walk outside your ram, hear me well on this, stop trying to think outside your ram. Because the man think of, and some of you may think that you this and you think you that and try to walk in it and find out you're not even there yet. Amen. Hear me well on this right here now. Amen. One of the analogies that I'm using here is that chapter 8, go down to verse 5. Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just start from the top. I'm, I'm going to work it so you can see it, okay? It says, and when he was come down from the mountain, see, Jesus, Jesus, when Jesus went down, I've talked to this before about the Beatitudes, when Jesus first went up into the mountain, and he, told, he called the 12 to him and so forth, and, and the first thing they set out, and, and they were used to the scribes and, and, the, and the rabbis and so forth, that when they, when they began to teach them the word of God, they used to bring out the scrolls and read them. Well, this man, Jesus, was totally different because he didn't bring out the scroll. He didn't open no book. He said he opened his mouth. They never saw that before where this man had the word inside of him and the word came out verifying and solidifying not only who he is, but whose he is. And he opened his mouth and began to teach them. Read that open uh, uh, Matthew 5. Mm -hmm. Now it may sound minute, but that was a major thing. And they were mesmerized. He's teaching us without reading anything. See, when that anointing flows on you, you just follow the path of that anointing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Don't try to force it. Don't try to emulate it or imitate it. It will do what it's supposed to do based on how it's supposed to perform through you. No, no, I'm not saying God can't use you. God used a donkey. So if he can use that, he can use any one of us, right? But we have to be in the right spirit in order to receive how God's going to use us. Now, I said all to say this right here. He said, and when he come down from the mountain, the great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and what? Worship, worship him. True worship of God, but worship him out. In order for this man to have truly worshiped, he was in the spirit. See, you may see the word worship, but true worship of God, but worship him how? Amen. See, you can't come to God in the flesh. Amen. God don't look for that worship. It says over there, it says God look for those. He seek those who worship in spirit to worship him that way. Amen. That's what it says there. You don't take your time go to the Bible and read it now. It says, and before, and behold, there came a leper and worshiped him saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. Why? He saw the word. But he came him in the spirit and not in the flesh. And Jesus said, put forth his hand and touch him saying, I will. See, the word's always said to us, I will. I will. Amen. But see, will you accept his will? He will, but will you will? He said, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately 
His leprosy was what? Now, now, hear this word. It was cleansed. Okay? Now, now, in other words, he was healed. Okay? But now, was he totally cured? See, sometimes you have to watch and find out now that you've been cleansed, how do you maintain what has just happened to you? Amen. How do you maintain that divine health? You got to first be cured from what got you there. Amen. If, if, I, if I'm trying to get rid of cigarettes in my life, okay, I've been on the wagon now for six months. That don't mean I'm cured. Amen. Just because I go to an alcohol anonymous meeting, that don't mean I'm cured. Amen. See, I may be healed for a moment. A moment, I, I use the term, I'm in a momentary pause. Amen. I ain't cussed nobody out in two months. But as soon as the right thing if that, if that thing in you about cussing has not really been cured, the right instance is going to pop up again, and next thing you are. Right back where you started. Why? Because you haven't really eradicated your flesh with that. Now, I'm going to show you how you can do it now. I'm not, I'm not going to take you somewhere that you can't get, get rid of the stuff. But it's be it unto you. It says, verse 4, And Jesus said to him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for testimony unto them. Now, now during that time, when, um, and, and you have to go back to the Old Testament, when people back in Leviticus, when, when people did certain things, they got cured certain things, they had to bring all kind of lambs, they had to bring all kind of dove, they had to bring all kind of anointed oil to offer it, for them, for them be it healed and cured, and the priest would take all that stuff, not, not knowing what to do with it, but take it to the holies of holies, and I say, okay, now. In other words, they were trying to, based on, you, 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 you're there now, and now we want to solidify it and maintain it. But see, the deal is, what those animals did, or what they brought to them, if their heart wasn't right, they were back into the same boat again. They just went through the physical stuff. And, and if you go to Leviticus, it's going to tell you what people had to do, had to bring to the priest for the healing, all that stuff here right there. But the thing about it, if their heart still wasn't right, they were back in the same boat again. Amen. See, they didn't maintain it. How many people you know rich today and broke tomorrow? Well, how, how, they, how come they couldn't maintain it? Because what was in them to just throw it away was still there. Man, I just got, I just won the lotto, oh, got a million dollars. Two months later, hey, man, can I borrow, can we get a dollar, a couple dollars from you? What? Didn't you just win the lotto? Didn't you just? They haven't been cured from what got them broke in the first place. Amen. Amen. If you're still going backwards and forward, you haven't been cured. You've been healed momentarily, but you ain't been cured. But you can be. As a man, think of. And when Jesus, verse 5, and when Jesus was in to Capernaum, there came unto him a what? Centurion. Now, centurion means honey, right? So that means he was, a, he was a, 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 like a little colonel over hundred folks. Amen? And, and, and the centurion... It says, uh, he's, I'm, let me repeat again. And when Jesus was entered to Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, seeking him out, and saying, Lord, my servant, life at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal them. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. In other words, he said, look, look, I'm not a Jew. And I'm not worthy because I know who you are and whose you are. But if you can just speak it. Said, Lord, I am not worthy. And thou should have come, should have come under my roof. But 
Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Now, what kind of faith is that? See, he, he not only had their power for himself, but he had their power enough to know that you just speak it. Because that servant know who I am. Because see what I was going to do. Once you did it, I know my servant going to be taken care of. Why? Because Amen. what I'm telling you, I'm walking in truth. I know who you are and whose you are. And I know what you can do and what you can't do. Why is that? He went on and he said, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I see unto this man go, and he goeth. To another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard, he what? And said to them that what? Verily, verily, I say unto you, I would. I have not found so great what? Not in Israel. Not in the spiritual realm in which I'm supposed to be represented. Are there any centurions in here today? Now, if you can't pray for yourself, how can you pray for others? Speak the word. That's all you, you look, look I'm, I'm, you know, I know I'm not worthy. But I know who you are. And I know whose you are. And I know what you can do. And because my faith is at that level of understanding that, you did this, this. I got the servant. Now, evidently, the servant believed in God and was a servant of the Lord. Even though he's my servant, I know he trusted this word. He heard about you, and I know about you. Somebody didn't hear about it because the centurion had to have heard about it for him to go to him. Amen. Amen. Oh, this man is who he really is. Now, you didn't see the, the rabbis or the Pharisees wouldn't ask him like that. But this centurion, this what they call at the time, unbelievers said, no, no, you, you say you are. He didn't, he didn't have to go to the cross for this man to believe him. Amen. See, some of us, you, you sit back and you want to say, well, you know something, I, I need to get a verification. I need to get a confirmation. Now, what you need is to get the word in your life. Amen. You got too many believers looking for confirmation. You know why they look for confirmation? Because the word ain't told in life. See, the Holy Spirit won't lie to itself. If you got the Holy Ghost in you, it's going to verify who you are, whose you are. Amen. 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 See, it's not going to alienate the truth from itself. Yeah. He, he said here, he said, And I say unto you, this Jesus talking, that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out. Where? There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go. Thy way. And as thou hast what? So it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed. Self same hour. Look what both verse 14 says. And when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and he and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto him. She didn't lay down. You know, sometimes we want to waddle in our stuff. She jumped right up because she understands who she'd been touched by. Now, it's not saying that the pain hadn't left her. But you know, oh, okay, I'm, I'm okay now. Why? You to touch me. That's all I need to do. The rest will fall in place. Amen. Hey, how, how, how many of y'all have, 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 have had, had stitches? Now, now, thank God that, that now when you get stitches, they, they'll numb the area and sew it up. And, and, but, but, but the pain come back sometime after that. Whatever they put on you has worn out, right? But, but, but you know for a fact that even though the pain is yours, it's okay now. Amen. Amen. So the pain is not an indicator that you haven't been healed. It's just an indicator that your flesh is still trying to respond to what has already taken place. But your spirit 
It's where the real confirmation has to come from. Amen. Amen. And what you tell in your flesh, get in line with the word. Amen. He has healed me, but now you you trying to bring this faith. Hey, no, no, we don't accept that. Get in line. Amen. That watch it begin to subside. See, some of us, I use this term, some of us need that spiritual root canal done to our spirit. We need to take that flesh, the nerve out so the work can begin. Amen. He says here now, and just for that, I'm not going to finish it, but I got to kick you on through this right here. Verse 16, when the Eden was come, they brought unto him many that was possessed with devils. And he cast out what? He cast out the what? If you don't deal with the spirit, you can't deal with the flesh. They were possessed. See, some of us still possessed with them ungodly spirits. Them real, them spirit that if the spirits ain't gone, your flesh can't be cured. You can release those spirits. Amen. You know, it, it's amazing. And I, I've used this term before. What's another name for liquor? Spirit. And, and, and liquor can be intoxicating. Right? The well, reason I know because the police said when you drunk, you've been in what? Time together now. You have been intoxicated with these spirits. Now, the deal is that in the natural, you can be intoxicated with the wrong spirits, and until them spirits are cast out, you still walk around intoxicated. You still drunk. Your flesh still. You, until you become sober, you can't even see straight, walk straight, or act straight. Amen. It has to get out of your system. In order for you to begin to get back to what you're supposed to get back to. Amen? Amen. Doctor, we're breaking this down. And we're going to try to get this there. Break it down, Pastor. See, and once those spirits have been eradicated out of you, that's when the real healing process, that's when divine health can begin to come in. Amen. That's when it can be maintained. Amen. He, he, he says here, he says here, oh, boy. Many of us have with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his what? Underline that. Well, how were they cast out? How do you think you want to cast them out? The Pastor, come lay hands on you, but you know something? It's going to take the word to get them things out of you. Amen. It says, and Heal all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our what? And bared our sickness. Now, now this, this this part, we're going to get close with this part. I couldn't get to the other part, but don't worry, we got next Sunday, and the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that, whatever we need to do. Now, when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandments to depart to the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee. Now, this is us now. Whithersoever thou goest. And he said unto him, The foxes have, hole, have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the son of man have not know where to lay his hand. Now, let me help y'all out a little bit right there. Jesus proposing a question to the man. Just like God had proposed to y'all. Some of y'all, y'all already passed that test. He said, look here now, uh, you, 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 you coming to me and you want to follow me. He said, look here, brother, I don't, I don't have my own place here. I don't have my own uh, 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 car and vehicle and stuff like that. He said, I don't know where I'm going to leave my head at the next day. He was telling that. Y'all don't have your own church building. Y'all don't have your own pulpit. Y'all don't know if we're going to be here this Sunday or be over the other hotel the next Sunday. But it's something in you, God told you to hang in there. 
Jesus went on here. Now, I'm going to try to see this now. He, he, was, he was breaking something down. Because, see, you got folk that got to see stuff in order to believe stuff. Amen. Come on, Pastor. You got people now, you're trying to get to come to Vision Christian Ministry, but they say, well, where y'all church building at? Well, we don't have a building. We over the thing there. See, it ain't the building going to save them. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you, you got churches, I'll tell you, Reverend, you got many churches right now, big, beautiful building, got so much chaos and hell going on right now, it's pathetic. Trying to get rid of the pastor, kick out the pastor, <laughs> just to maintain the building. Jesus, look here now. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me let you know now. You, you follow, cause he knew how they were looking at them sanctuary. He knew how those, those cathedrals were over there. He said now, because he was saying, what, 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 what's the deal now? You, find, you know, I don't have no big house. I don't have no sanctuary. I don't have no really a place to lay my head. I don't even have my own house. You talk about being with me, and I don't even know where I'm going to lay my head the next day. <laughs> but when God puts something in you, yes. don't, don't try to question it. Go with it. See, we're talking about disciples of this word here. He says, and Jesus said unto him, because remember the man said, and a certain scribe came and, and said unto him, him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. See, y'all not following, that's like y'all trying to follow the word. Amen. See, people right now, either they're going to follow a sanctuary where all the big shots are, the little shots are, or they're going to follow the word. Amen. Now, you got some people, sometimes the devil attacks you. Oh, I want to go over with all these folks. Where are all them folks still living in hell? Why are you going over there? And Jesus said to him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. Then it says that another disciple said to him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. That's the part I'm getting to you right now. But Jesus said, follow me. Let the dead bury the dead. Don't run after folks. Don't feel you got to do stuff in the natural and it's going to keep you from following God. Let them go. Yes. <laughs> Over in Amplified it says, but Jesus said unto him, follow me and leave the dead in their sin to bury their own dead. You got people you trying to help, you trying to work with, and them same people taking you away from following God, seeking God. You can't serve two masters. You have to let some folks go, and you got to stay on your path towards God. Amen. Let the dead bear the dead. It's so much to this word. It's just so much to this word. And we got to open our hearts to realize and make a decision that we got to choose to stay. Your health, your divine healing, your mind, your will, and your emotion, all that's tied to this. Amen. If you want to know what divine healing is, you got to first be cured so you can know what divine health is Amen. all about. Spiritually, physically, as well as emotionally. Amen. Amen. That's what's all. Close your Bibles. Close your, I, I can't get to my next. I'm going to finish some of this up in, in, in two or three more Sundays. Today, I had something here that, that I want to share with y'all. And, 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 and briefly now, while you got the Bible, let me, let me, don't close them right quick. Ephesians 6 and 1. Motherhood. I got something I need to share right quick here now, right? Ephesians 6 and 1. And 2. What, what, what? Somebody get there right quick. I, I tell you what. I need somebody to get to Ephesians 6, and I need somebody to get to Psalms 113.9. Especially Psalm 113.9. This is going to be a blessing to some folks. And then the last part I need to get to 1 Timothy. Now, okay, Ephesians 6, 1, 2, and 3, Psalms 113, verse 9, 1 Timothy 2, 12 through 15. Help me out now. Help me out. Y'all won't quit the pastor now. Anybody there yet? And any one of them yet? Okay, Ephesians 6, 1, 2, and 3. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, 
With what? With what? The promises are tied back to your obedience to the people God has given you to help you enter into this world. Amen. What else it says? It says that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Oh, so even your days are tied to this. First, uh, Psalm, so motherhood now, and fatherhood. Go ahead. Psalm 113. That's a good one here. One thirteen, verse nine. Look at this. Look at this. You're the right person to read this. You're the right person to read this. We read it now. What it says? Even though you don't, you didn't have a child physically. He still made you the mother of children. Amen. Don't think because you didn't physically have none that you're not a mother. He made you a mother of children. Amen. This is why it's so important. You'll find those who don't have physical children. They always try to help other children and other people with children. Did you see that? I want you to see that. What 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 does First Timothy? Two, 12 through 15. 12 through 15. They say, well, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to impose authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed from then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived, Transgression. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and atonement. Now, let me break this down to you. Even though, ladies, you might have been deceived, you know, you know how men don't deceive you, somebody doesn't deceive you, that child, that's why you love them children, that child you had is the one that brought you back into life and brought salvation back into your life. Amen. The Bible, you'll be saved. So that's why you love that child because sometimes you say, even though that child hard and so forth, that child saved me and helped me get delivered from my own destruction. Amen. That's what they read there. Hallelujah. Give you one last verse, and I want to make sure I get that to you. Proverbs 2020. This made it to the children. Yes. And to you too will grow. What it says? Proverbs 2020. Boy, well, like, like, like TV term, 2020. Look what it says there. Uh -huh. Proverbs 2020. Boy, y'all turn them pages. Now we got all day. 2020. Read, read that louder. That's what it says. Walk around here cussing your parents. Amen. Is it your lip gonna be put out? Amen. And already gonna turn your lights out. Whatever brightness around you, brothers and sisters, how, how many people in here? If you want them, well, let me know so I can put you down in the Bible somewhere. How many of y'all got the opportunity to select who your parents are going to be? <laughs> you had no say so. Amen. Amen. Who your parents? It, when God selected your parents, he selected a vehicle to get you on the earth. And, and because God the one selected, you got to honor God in his selection. You said, well, they've been mean to me. They didn't do this. Hey, hey, so God made a mistake. Well, they didn't do me this way. They haven't been doing that for me. So I'm going to cuss them out, okay? And cursing them out, you cursing God out. And that's the reason why some of us don't have anywhere to go. No. Bearing women, they say the children that God sent to you, 
they're going to be joyful to be around you. Amen. This is what motherhood is about. This is what fatherhood is all about. Don't curse the blessing that God has brought before you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to close your Bibles here. Amen. Yeah, give them this up, boy, y'all. On this Mother's Day, on this Mother's Day, Amen, ladies, as I pray today, I pray for many more days of blessings in your life. I pray that even though some of these kids don't act like that, you still got to love them because they saved you in childbearing. For, for, for the physical bearing woman, you're not bearing at all. God has an even more greater task for you. Because now you've got to correct things that may have gone wrong in a lot of other children's lives. You have to bring what motherhood is all about in spite of. There's a joyful lot of children that you encounter, that you've got to deal with. Motherhood is spiritual, just not physical. We've got to trust God no matter what. Take this opportunity to, to whatever mother that God placed around you, if she's still walking this earth, call and say, you know, I would just want to say thank you. Thank you. I know sometimes we didn't always agree, but I thank you for being there anyway. This is what God's doing, and it's a blessing behind it. My mother has been gone now of about, oh, almost 16 years. But every day she walked the earth, she was a blessing to me. I was a firstborn, so I know I saved her from a lot of stuff. But the challenge is she saved me also. I don't care how many parties I went to on Friday, Saturday night. Sunday morning, I was going to Sunday school. Amen. It, it wasn't an option. I had to be there. Amen. They didn't realize that God had entrusted them a future minister of his own calling. Amen. They just followed the path that God has placed inside their heart. It's a blessing. I say to all of you today, you don't know who you're bearing. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you raise it up by just giving them the right word. That might be a future minister, a future minister's wife, a future evangelist, prophetess, sharing the gospel. And God has entrusted you to handle that person in that season. Amen. One plant of another water, but God gives the increase. Gives the increase. No man is an island. There are people in each and every one of our lives that have been in general life has helped us in some way to help mold us to be the person, the godly person that God wants to be. For that, we have to tell the Lord, thank you. I said to all the mothers, fathers, please don't grow weary and well do it. There's a rightful place for you. Fulfill that role no matter what, how it appears, how it seems. In the end, it's all good.